because it said that Manafort met with Assange three times at the Ecuadorian embassy, except nobody has a picture of it. Nobody has a video of it. And he was never even logged in. And by the way, his passport was never stamped. <laughs> even I can figure that one out. Wow, uh, Marcus Conti reporting. Ah, Jimmy Dore. Fucking, you get your Jimmy Dore for the day, man, right? Oh, shit. Watch out, Jimmy. So I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, uh, I'm a rather big fan of uh, Mr. Dore and his fine work. And I'm going to show you some of the, some, something that he did is just fucking amazing, right? He exposes uh, the Guardian and Politico in one sweeping breath on the Manafort bullshit, right? The bullshit story that Manafort, visited Assange and the in the Ecuadorian embassy and he colluded and and colluded with the Russians and Trump knew all about it, right it's a total bullshit story right and and Jimmy Dore proves it with overwhelming you know vigor right so but before we did that I want to talk about our friend um I'll do a shout out to uh uh Mark Mark Hodgson fucking guy man you got to hear this shit man you can hear his song right right this is the guy that's doing the artwork Right, he does all the. We're gonna take that thing down soon, and we're gonna put up his shit. Right, but he's doing all the uh, Marcus Conti uh, uh, artwork, and it turns out that he's not only he's not only a graphic designer, but he's a musician. Right, guys up in England, man. What's up, Mark? What's up, my brother? My brother from a, from a different mother up in fucking Manchester, England. <laughs> so so um so we so we were talking uh, uh, on email, and he says you know he's he does music. I, and I'm like, you know, people send, you know, when people send you a song and they say, oh, you got to listen to my song, right? And you're like, this is gonna, this is gonna suck, right? You get, and you, 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 you know, you creep up to the thing and you, you you're like, oh, I gotta fucking brace myself for this, and you click on it, right? And it's, and you expect it to suck. And this fucking guy blew me away, right? It's just one song, right? It's just one song because I was looking for a song to do. You know, as a uh, as a kind of an intro song, and and he provided it. So let's so let's have a look at fucking. Oh, well, let me give his uh, his details too. So one one mank, M A N C banded. One mank banded. The song is Mister Know It All. His album is Paralyze Analyze. You can see the whole album on Spotify and iTunes. I put the links down below forever. I'm just gonna leave it there. I let him. Let Mark is is doing the right thing. He's He's doing the right thing. He's doing the what I see as a uh, a, a great service. So let's 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 get a hand for Mark. Take it away. They call in Europe, Mr. Know It All. He saw all your faults, Mr. Know It All. So I want to propose the question, right? Is it possible to be your own man? Is it possible to genuinely blaze your own trail and, you know, and not give a fuck? You know, like some people say, I don't give a fuck. I'll do whatever I want. But they do give a fuck because, for example, like the activists, you know, the active pink pussy hat activist. And they, they're all about stop the wars and fucking, oh, they're out in the street protesting. Oh, they fucking got the pink pussy hat on, right? And they're saying, stop the wars, stop the, save the children. But meanwhile, they go back to their uh, comfy little cubicle and they work for the, you know, they work for the big organizations. They can work for Boeing. They can work for whoever, whoever's financing, whoever's continuing the financing of these wars. They go back there and they don't give it a second. They don't give it a second thought. That's what I'm trying to say here. And we're going to see some amazing work by Jimmy Dore. But unfortunately, Jimmy Dore, or is it unfortunate? I don't know yet. You're going to, I want you to decide because Jimmy Dore is his own man, but he's also part of the TYT network. And I'm going to play Jimmy Dore's stuff, and I'm also going to play uh, Mr. Potato Head, Chank Yuga's stuff, right? Where it seems that they're, they're, they're like opposite. You know, they're totally opposite. Mr. Potato Head is talking about Russian conspiracy and Jimmy Dore is spending his time exposing 
the Russian conspiracy, right? So there's a contradiction there, right? And why does why has has Cenk Uger, Mr. Potato Head, decided that Russia is suddenly is suddenly the enemy and that Trump is the bad guy and Trump did it and all this bullshit conspiracy, right? Because he took twenty million dollars from Jeffrey Jeffrey Katzenberg, the CEO from DreamWorks. Oh, fucking money it doesn't change doesn't change me no we just took that money because we needed the money right we fucking that's that's investment uh you know that's uh, uh seed money right <laughs> now here's the deal with seed money and then and then i'll, I'll we'll jump into uh, uh jimmy and jimmy Dore stuff right because because it raises the question can you stay on the right track if someone drops 20 million dollars in your pocket and so far it doesn't look like jimmy Dore has budged whatsoever but his affiliation is still there, which means he's he's relying on some degree of support, right? Some degree, because when you click on that link under his on the Jimmy Dorse video, it leads you to TYT Network and give us your money. Right? That's to me that's disturbing. There's something to it, Jimmy. Right? Something to it. What is it? Nothing. All right. Well, it. But on the other hand. You see how the money corrupted Chank Uger, right? His whole vision, his whole view when Hillary Clinton, when when Bernie Sanders got cheated and he told everybody to vote for Hillary Clinton on his network, his three million people network, right? And and the, the, the smart people said, fuck you, we're out of here, right? He continued to parade that, no, 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 Hillary Clinton's going to win. And then Trump beat him, beat her. And he stuck holding the bag, right? So he's continuing to promote the idea that that Russia, it's just such a bullshit story. But you say you say to yourself, well, why would someone continue to do that? Let's watch. Let's just watch some more Jimmy Dore. Jimmy Dore is going to make the case, right? For he's going to expose the Guardian for the fake story that Manafort had something to do with with uh, Julian Assange. And now it also brings raises the question that it, it vindicates Corsi, it vindicates Roger Stone, because the story of Manafort going over there and colluding with Assange, the publisher, right, who's exposing fucking crimes inside of the DNC that were leaked to him, right, it, 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 it dissolves a lot of that story. But the mainstream media is going to continue to promote it. So he does a great job. And then there's a hit piece that the that political politico does that tries to say oh that was the story the fake story was a russian plant <laughs> so they get caught cheating the, the the guardian right and then when they get caught cheating they get their buddies politico to write a story that says oh that was they that that story was planted on the guardian right and Jimmy Dore does something very interesting, and then I'll jump into it. Is he talks extensively about spooks, right? How, how these, how military and CIA infiltrate media to control the narrative, right? And I could tell you already, in, in my short experience doing this, I get bombed with bullshit emails of all kinds of whack conspiracies, and then those people try to donate to you and and try to get you on board. With their bullshit story, right? So let's listen. Let's listen to Jimmy. Oh, fuck me. Let's listen to Jimmy. And then we're going to listen to Chank Uger. Because it said that Manafort met with Assange three times at the Ecuadorian embassy, except nobody has a picture of it. Nobody has a video of it. And he was never even logged in. And by the way, his passport was never stamped. Every month or two months or so, there's this big story. We got him on Russiagate. We got Trump on Russiagate. And then everybody, everybody rushes and ah, well, this is it. And then it just and the and the establishment news sources that the news outlets that were reporting this story that The Guardian reported, they would use as their source The Guardian story, which is not sourced. <laughs> The Guardian hit piece was so spectacularly desperate in its overreaching to advance a narrative which has been used to manufacture support for longtime CIA slash MI6 agendas like arresting Julian Assange, stopping WikiLeaks, censoring the Internet, and subverting Russia, that it completely exposed itself as the establishment PSYOP firm that it is. 
there was a time when there was a thing called the Church Committee here in the United States, and what it did was it exposed the CIA's infiltration into all our newsrooms. Your own government is propagandizing you at constantly through the news. So a uh, a spook inside of a, a you know a paid liar inside of a spook agency said this happened. Did you check it? No, we re reprinted it. That's what we did. So then after that story got debunked, Politico, Politico. So now you see how the coordination works. It's not just one Western news outlet in bed with the intelligence agencies doing their bidding, propaganda like the Guardian. Then Politico prints an even more unbelievably bullshit story. So it's written by, if you see right there, by Alex Finley. Do you know who Alex Finley is? <laughs> Alex Finley isn't a real person. <laughs> <laughs> they got a fake person to write a story saying that it was the Russian intelligence that duped the Guardian into writing that story. Uh, Did someone plant a story trying uh, tying Paul Manafort? Did someone plant a story? Yeah, it was the intelligence agencies and the CIA, the MI6, and the Ecuadorian intelligence agency. They didn't plant it. They gave it to Luke Harding, and he fucking printed it, and their editors went right along with it. Why? Because you're all bought and corrupted. So Luke Harding has written a book about the Trump campaign ties to Russia, literally titled Collusion, and literally without a fucking fact in it. He had not one, one source that could corroborate collusion. Not one. Including about the Steele dossier, which is fucking bullshit. We showed you on this show. Where did the Steele dossier come from? It came from a spy in England who paid people inside the Kremlin to give them made-up stories about Trump. We showed you Richard Engel told Rachel Maddow, I can't corroborate any of the stuff in here. And she stopped the interview and moved on and said, well, it doesn't have to be true to blackmail you. That's how propaganda works. You just keep saying it over and over and over and over. He said, even after two hours after I read it, I still can't believe that Political actually published an article by an ex-CIA agent under a fake name <laughs> saying that if the Guardian's blockbuster Assange Manafort story is false, it's Russia's mm -hmm. fault. Parroting the U.S. media at this point is futile. Will, will anyone ever call the Guardian conspiracy theorists? No. Is the Guardian going to lose their Facebook page over this for, for fake news? No. Because it's fake news and it that aids the establishment. There's never a price to pay. There's a price to pay for telling the truth about the establishment. There's never a price to pay for lying for the establishment. So if you want my opinion of that, that's that's one of the most spectacular analysis of fake news. He lays it out, evidence based. He gives you the evidence that the that the nothing is sourced, that it's bullshit piled upon bullshit of bullshit stories fake names, CIA agents that use fake names, that, that infiltrate media, right? And they just, he's telling you Politico just takes a story and prints it because some jerk off in the CIA gave it to him and said, this is the story, right? He, he makes the case like nobody else, right? Jimmy Dore is this, this fucking amazing. That is amazing investigative journalism, right? It is, but, and here's the but. And I might be wrong. I mean, that's why I'm doing this, right? I, I might be wrong. You you tell me if I'm wrong, right? So, guy, can you be your own man, right? So, why does why does Jimmy Dore continue to work with Mr. Potato Head, Chank Uger, at TYT? Why does he still identify? Why hasn't he disavowed? Because, oh, and why doesn't he attack TYT and Chank Uger for his conspiracy theories? Now, you can go to TYT. Uh, the channel, the Young Turks, and you could search Trump, Russia, Cenk Uger, Trump, uh, uh, Russia, Trump, Uger, Trump, you know, any one of those combinations, right? And you'll watch Cenk Uger 30, 40 times create these conspiracies about how Trump cheated. <laughs> when he knows all along Clinton cheated, right? He knows it. Right? He's, not, he's a bullshit artist, right? This is a bullshit artist, right? So, so, so why does why does Jimmy Dore a support the Young Turks network not only not only verbally or in theory but actually financially because if people click on that 
link under your video, they go to TYT and they give them money, right? So you're supporting a fake story with your, what, what are you protecting? What are they giving you? They're giving you nothing, Jimmy. They give you bullshit. They give you nothing. They give you, they hold you down. Right, that's what that's what they do. They they're holding you down, right? Like fucking. What about that kid that worked there? Fucking Jordan Sheridan, right? <laughs> kid, remember that guy? He was good. I mean, he was chasing you know chasing the fucking twenty year old girls around, right? <laughs> that was the fucking, right? They got rid of that guy. Right? He was chasing the twenty year olds around in the uh, 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 Bernie Bernie rallies. Go to the Bernie rallies. Say, hey, how you doing, right? You watch his, you watch his videos, right? This is a uh, tyt politics during the Bernie you know days. And you'd watch him, and and all of his interviews were like hot, you know, young girls, right? All fucking, he like he likes his young girls. Right? He's a young guy, but he likes his young girls, right? And he then and he got, he got he got he bit off more than he can chew, right? And they're just walking the girls back to, to you know to the to the hotel. Oh, you want to be an intern? All right, I'll get a little fucking. This is how we this is how we intern. Right? You ready, fucking? Uh, you ready? You go. Now it's my turn. Your turn. My turn. Right? They're passing the girl around like fucking like a like a joint in the hotel room, right? In the hot tub, right? Fucking. So they got rid of that guy, right? And uh, what they're left with is is uh, is something totally uh, something else. But I, I, it's just a funny story. I mean, it's just a funny anecdote that that uh, they had that sleazy kid working there. But so so Chank Uger, Mr. Potato Head. Let's listen to. Am I making it up? Am I exaggerating? Is Chank Uger a Russian conspiracy theorist? Is he a guy who sits and weaves fake news and talk and because. See, see Chank in Chank's mind. Here's the problem. Chank thinks that all it's you have to win, right? You can lie; it doesn't matter. You have to win, right? Because nothing else matters but winning, right? And that's where I fundamentally disagree. I think when you sell your values down the road, you could win with the truth. Why not? Why not bang them over the head with the truth, right? Why not destroy the Democratic Party and bring them to their knees by telling the truth about them? Why? Why are you fabricating the the, the damage the Democratic Party did to itself in the 2016 primary when they stole it from Bernie Sanders. And why are you trying to blame Trump, who for all intent and purposes won the election fairly, as far as we know? How did he win? I don't know. I don't believe any of it's real, but somehow he he prevailed as the winner, right? So it, it's just it just makes sense that you would why not why not fly into the truth? And destroy these powers that be because you took the money. That's the fucking problem. You're lazy. You're a fucking fat, lazy fuck. <laughs> you took the money. You took the twenty million dollars from Katzenberg. Right, what you do with the money, Jank? What you do with the money, Jank? You do with the money. See, it, it's, these guys get comfortable. They they like they start to build up their business and they got people on the payroll and then you're like, all right, so fucking rush. Everybody knows this bullshit, but we're gonna win. We're gonna win. See, in Chen Kuger's mind, we're going to win. So let's listen to Mr. Russian Conspiracy Theorist. Three million subscribers on YouTube listening to this bull fucking shit. And if you've never heard this story before, it is amazing. And in my opinion, uh, conclusive proof that at least someone on the Trump campaign very, very clearly communicated with the Russians. Yeah, if you don't believe it, uh, I, I think after you look at the evidence, um, there might be something wrong with you. There's a guy named Max, that's a pseudonym that he's using because he doesn't want to be outed. Uh, and he is among these computer scientists. But again, the reporters have confirmed that he is in fact a prominent computer scientist, the guy who worked on this and asked uh, many other uh, computer scientists, uh, dozens including professors who are experts in this area, to also look at the evidence to see if, uh, if he was getting anything wrong. And they all concluded, no, it is exactly right. Uh, here's what he found out. In the small town of Littitz, Pennsylvania, a domain linked to Trump organization seemed to be behaving in a peculiar way. And here's what Max had to say about it. We, we were watching this happen in real time and we thought, why the hell is a Russian bank communicating with a server that belongs to the Trump organization and at such a rate? Uh, Things like spamming and spoofing, they're all absolute nonsense. I'll get to that in a minute as well. Uh, but certainly, when you first look at it, it raises a almost a literal red flag, <laughs> but not a red scare. Now, you're telling me that there's a server in Pennsylvania belonging to Donald Trump, and the two major groups communicating with it are a Russian bank and the DeVos family. 
Later, Betsy DeVos is named education secretary, and that's a coincidence. So the Russian bank and the DeVos family communicating with a Trump server during the campaign, the critical parts of the campaign for Mayon. After the election, Betsy DeVos incidentally becomes education secretary. Then her brother incidentally goes to Seychelle Islands to meet with the Russians to set up a back channel with Vladimir Putin. What a bunch of incidents and coincidence. Spamming, spoofing, are you crazy? Anyone who doesn't understand that is completely irrational. Oh, well, golly gee, there was a glitch that went to Trump talking to the Russian bank, and then another glitch from the Russian bank back to them. The Dwarfs family, another glitch. Oh my God, look at all these coincidental glitches. There ain't no glitch. They're obviously, obviously communicating to one another. So Max concluded, we decided this was a covert communication channel, to which I say, of course, of course it is. Uh, were they a sign that the Russians and someone in the Trump administration were communicating and hence colluding? Absolutely, absolutely. You'd be crazy to think otherwise. And if you are, I don't know. I don't, maybe you got a dog in the fight. I don't. Maybe you have already been in, in a certain position and you've maintained it for so long. You don't want to see straight. So there's the collusion right there. So I conclude this report with tick, 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 tick. He definitely did it. So when I watch that, my blood boils. Right? I almost wanted to. I wanted to like. I thought of like, you know, when you were a kid and you had that punching bag, that fucking thing that the sand, it's got sand on the bottom and you keep punching it in the face and it, it fucking hits the ground. It comes up again. You punch it in the face. They should make a Cenk Yuga punching bag so you could punch it in its face and kick it and fucking spit on it and take a piss on it and shit on it, right? Fucking jerk off. I mean, you, you watch that and it, it just, it's so viscerally incorrect, right? But he's... He's he's trying to, to, to validate a fake story, right? So, all right, that the story's not about Chank Yuga. We know he's a jack off and a and an imbecile and a money grabber. And he's got he's got fucking cats in his pocket now for twenty million fucking Katzenberg, right? Okay, we know that, right? Now let's push him aside. Jimmy Dore, how do you how do you vindicate yourself that this is your boss? Right, we're in the office, right? And Chank Uger has the big office down the corner because he's the boss, right? He's the CEO, right? And you got your big cubicle now, right? And right, and how do you how do you justify Chank's behavior? How do you how do you over overlook it without calling him out on it? What is he giving you, right? Because this is important. This is important stuff right here because there is no, there's no, there's no truth. You know, people try to accuse me like I'm some, I'm a CIA spook. I mean, it's all the jack offs, you know, the, the cunt faces, right? They're all, a lot of them are on, on my, on this thread. That's why I don't censor the thread, right? I don't censor any of the comments because you see them pop in, right? They usually come at you in a way that's deeply personal and very involved and very extensive, right? Personal, personal attack. Attack the person's persona. Don't attack his, his policy. Attack the, the persona and some policy, right? But you see them that no one has the time to fucking come after me. Who am I? I'm not nobody special. But it's, it's interesting that you see it because most people under that sort of a, an attack would just delete it. But now that it's up and you can see it, Right? It's it's interesting to review the attack, right? And most of those people are spooks because they, they got to be making their money, you know, some way. Maybe not a deep state, you know, CIA guy, but the think tanks that, that billionaires give money to to control the narrative, right? The narrative is very important. And because I guess I'm now seen as someone that can, that can have an influence on that narrative, now I get placed under attack right so maybe jimmy are you under attack too or is that is because you take the money from you know that you're you're in the network does does that exempt you from the attack i don't know but i would like to know i would like to but uh, jimmy Dore should talk about his connection with chank uger and how he can very 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 uh, like you know exceptionally expose the Guardian and Politico, but he gives Chank Uger and and um, and TYT a pass.